So we're going to spend some time in prayer and I was reflecting that it was actually around this time last year that we got to speak to the Staunton family and that they were heading off to Cambodia. So I thought it would be nice to spend some time praying for them as well. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your amazing grace, your unfailing love that you took our place and that you bore our cross. God, we thank you that you didn't stay high away in the heavens, but you came down to this earth to walk with us, to be vulnerable as a child and to experience the life that we experience. And we thank you that you revealed yourself to us. You showed us what it looks like to be holy, what it looks like to live the life that you intend for us. And not only that, but you sacrificed yourself for us so that we could have that forgiveness and that relationship with you. So God, we thank you so much for all of that. And we reflect on that today. And I just ask that you'll help us to feel that sense of joy um, because of everything that you've done for us. And Father, we thank you for the joy of being able to meet together in person again. Lord, that it's been such a challenging year for so many people and that we, that you have blessed us and you've blessed our country to be able to get the virus under control. And Lord, that we have this blessing of being able to meet and to worship you. Lord, we thank you for all the good things that are happening with the vaccine. And Lord, we just pray that you will be with all of those scientists as they're going through their trials, as they're trying to work out the best distribution methods together with governments and leaders around the world. We just pray that you'll have your hand over that process and that you will bring healing to this world. Lord, we pray particularly for those countries that are really having a hard time and just ask that you'll be giving the leaders of those countries wisdom and compassion um, and, yeah, that you'll help them to lead those countries well and put measures in place to help their people. And, Father, we also remember the Staunton family. Um, we thank you that we did get to meet them briefly at the end of last year. And, Lord, we thank you that they were able to go to the field when they intended. I know that so many people were stopped from going to these countries because of the virus. So we thank you for the timing and your blessing that they were able to go. And Father, we pray that as they're reflecting on the year, that you'll be, your presence will be with them and you'll be speaking to them and helping them to come to terms with and unpack everything that's happened. As they're learning the Khmer language, we ask that you'll give them patience um, and that you'll give them, yeah, I guess just that ability to be able to learn and to be okay to make mistakes. Um, and I ask that as you're uh, helping them to practice with the local people and to build those relationships, that you will just be there with them, that you'll bless those relationships, you'll help them to build trust and that you'll create opportunities for them to share your love especially as we're coming up to this time of Christmas we really ask that you will open up opportunities for them to talk about about you about their relationship with you and how good you are and we pray for the people that they have those relationships with that you'll be opening up their hearts to you and and softening them and preparing the way um, for the family to be speaking about you um, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this service. We thank you for the way that you've been with our community. For many people who have been unwell and sick in our community, we thank you that you have been active and working and present. And I pray that you'll just continue to be doing that, that you'll continue to be active and working and helping people to heal and recover. Lord, we bring all of these things before you and, and thank you in advance for all of the good things that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 
All right, now we're going to do our candle lighting. So I've asked Regina to help me with the reading. Um, so thank you, Regina. So for those of you at home who have got your um, Advent wreath, now's the time that you can join with us and light the candles together with us. Um, so we're just going to do a couple readings and then we'll be lighting the candles. Sorry, I left my glasses, so you <laughs> just have to bear with me. Um, on this third Sunday in Advent, Psalm 146, the prophet Isaiah tells of a world where the desert, the desert sings, rejoices and blossoms, a world where eyes will see and ears will hear, where everyone will want to dance and sing for joy. We watch and wait for such signs of God's coming kingdom. We wait in hope and peace and with joy. The God in whom we rejoice prepares our heart for the coming of the Lord. God of grace and truth, may our spirit rejoice in the coming birth of Christ, our Saviour in whom we experience your mercy and see your glory. We light the candle for joy. Help, help us, us to rediscover. Help us to rediscover your, your joy, joy this is Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Regina. Um, all right, so I wasn't organized enough to get someone to help with the Bible reading, so you have to bear with my voice again. So the Bible reading comes from Luke chapter, eight, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. Excellent. Thanks, Elizabeth. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Right, I'm going to pray for the message and for Paul. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have helped Paul to ponder over this word and to consider it and that you've given him words to share with us. Lord, I pray that you help us to have um, soft hearts, open eyes, open ears, to listen to what you have to say to us and to receive this encouragement. And we just pray a blessing on Paul as he shares with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Here. Wow. Um, I'm really interested. I was just thinking before about how 
a theme that I hadn't realised, but we've been talking about these words, peace, joy, love and that. And in the midst of our normal um, life and this idea that, you know, we're, you know, we're meant to be peaceful in a time that may be not peace. And this week, or last Saturday, um, we moved our daughter and, uh, and our son-in-law and their family out of our home in Greensboro down to Warrigal, which for me involved, and April involved helping them clean and pack. And then I drove the truck down to Warrigal and back and um, had to organize the van and all that kind of stuff. And that was last weekend. And this Saturday, my, uh, my other son and his partner moved into the house. So this Saturday, it was all about me again getting the truck and April and driving down to Parkdale and back twice to get the loads of stuff back. So this week has kind of been not what you would call a, um, a peaceful week. <laughs> um, certainly had moments of hope. Um, <laughs> and there was those times when, you know, the truck company rang up and said, that truck that you know that you were going to pick up at 8 o'clock in the morning from Preston, well, we've given it to somebody else. And um, you need to pick it up now from Campbellfield. So that was this morning's race back before church. Well, this idea of that in amongst all this craziness, we, we have these moments where we're meant to be joyful. And we did this week. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, April and I had the really joyful occasion of, um, of actually having our baby prem granddaughter who was born uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, about then. 1.9 kilos, four pounds six. She's like, you hold her like this, you know. <laughs> um, and she came home from the hospital during the week. And so for the first time, we got to meet her and actually hold her. And that, that sense of there was something really special about the arrival of her coming home. Like it was so special for obviously for the parents and obviously she's so cute. Um, it was really good. This week, and amongst all the things that are going to happen in the week, but this week coming, there is another joyous moment coming on Friday. There will be a wedding of Matilda and Ben right here in this location at the church. But when you think about weddings and the wedding ceremonies, they're actually filled with a number of joyous moments. They're almost this uh, collection of joyous moments to follow on one another. One, one of the big joyous moments is when the bride walks in and comes down the aisle. And I don't want to put too much pressure on Ben, but I've been there standing where the groom, you see the tears start to run, tears of joy. Ben, Ben, <laughs> poke yourself in the eye if you have to. Um, tears of joy as they, they see their bride arrive. It's, it's an amazing moment. And then there's another joyous moment that happens towards the end of the service, once all the things have happened, you know, the rings have been exchanged and the vows have been made and the preacher has finished his 45-minute sermon on marriage, wowing everybody. Sorry, it won't be 45 minutes, but um, that the celebrant says and makes the announcement, you, bride and groom, you're now husband and wife and you can kiss each other and i can tell you from being on the front watching out you see everyone in the church or in the place has this joyous kind of release yes that moment has arrived they're now married um so there are plenty of occasions when we celebrate the arrival of joy it can be a big thing like the birth of a baby or, or a wedding or when Karen Venuto will get her keys for her apartment. And sometimes it's small, like when the doorbell rings and you go there and the guy has got that delivery parcel that you bought online. <laughs> There's that moment of joy. It's arrived. Yes, 
it came. Or when you meet some, you arrange that meeting with somebody in a cafe and they, they suddenly appear, you know, that one moment when you suddenly meet that person, there's this little moment of joy that kicks in. Today we're thinking about joy, which is kind of a little bit ironic because joy isn't something you think, it's actually an emotion you feel. Yet, if you know your good uh, cognitive behavioural therapy, we feel what we think. So, um, but when we think about joy, what is it? What is joy? Well, you know, it's, it's pleasure. It's happiness. But we know that it's more than happiness. It's actually has, it's more nuanced than just being happy. It's about delight. It's about jubilation. It has a sense of triumph um, and a sense of rejoicing. They all kind of get mixed in to this thing that we call joy. In our series, Rediscovering Christmas, today our theme is rediscovering the celebration of joy. And the secret I want to share about rediscovering the celebration of joy is the word arrival. This idea that we, the joy that we are looking for at Christmas is about an arrival. The apostle, our joy at Christmas is a celebration of the arrival of our Lord. The Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Um, and if uh, you, I really like the New Living Translation, which says, always be full of joy in the Lord. Again, rejoice. I like that because it's focusing on this idea of it's in the Lord, it's the arrival of the Lord. The message is clear, that the source of the joy is the presence of our Lord. Now, the scriptures actually say a stack about joy. Thanks, uh, Kat, that was great. There, there's actually, she had plenty to choose from because there's over 200 references to joy or joyfulness in the scriptures. Like, that's plenty to pick from. Um, in and in many of those occasions, many, not all, but many of them, the source of joy picks up this theme of arrival, something arriving, or something happens that we connect to the joy. In Matthew's gospel, he records this moment on the day of Jesus's resurrection. And the two Marys, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, go to the tomb. And there they run into an angel, not literally run into an angel, but there, an angel appears and the, array, and the angel tells them about the arrival of the risen Jesus. Jesus is risen. And it says that they left the tomb quickly with fear and with joy <laughs> and went to tell the disciples. And I love the fact that the, that account kind of captures these two competing um, things, fear and joy. And you might go, how does that work? Well, actually, it happens quite a lot, this idea of competing emotions. You know, sometimes it's bewilderment. In their case, it was both bewilderment and jubilation. It was, wow, what the hell is going on here? And Wow, this is awesome. There was both happening. And you may have experienced this yourself. Have you ever attended a funeral or memorial service of someone who's a Christian? And in amongst, there can be grief and sorrow and loss, but there's also this element of joy that they have finally arrived at home with their eternal life with their heavenly father. And so it's not unusual that we have these 
joy sitting in amongst other stuff. It's not unusual that, you know, one week I'm frustrated with truck driving and pickups and then joyful moments of holding a baby. It's, it's okay. That's normal. And we're going to see again, actually another example in the scriptures, where Jesus is actually saying this. And he actually talks to his disciples on the night he's, betray- he, he's going to be betrayed. He's at the Last Supper. So this is from John 16. And he actually says to them, you know, he's told them, hey, you know, it's all going to be bad. It's going to get suffering. It's going to go crazy in a minute. And, and he says, so you have pain now, but I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice. And no one will be able to take that joy away from you. I love that. I just love that, that line I've never picked up before. No one is ever going to be able to take that joy away from you. Knowing you, knowing that you have met the risen Jesus, you are in the presence of Jesus. That's where your joy comes from. The sense of a, this, I capture this with a sense of arrival. It must, you know, we read those scriptures when, the disciples met Jesus, at the risen Jesus. Man, it must have been a crazy moment <laughs> of both bewilderment and joy. Our joy at Christmas is a celebration of the arrival of our Lord. Two weeks ago, we looked at how rediscovering the power of hope at Christmas was about rediscovering the identity of Jesus and who he was and how that can transform your life. Last week was about rediscovering the importance of peace and that sense of wholeness and restoration that we get in in Jesus, from Jesus, in our relationship with God, and that is the source of our peace. This week, we look at Rediscovering the celebration of joy is about the arrival of our Lord. Hope was about Jesus' identity. Peace was about our restoration and wholeness through Jesus. And joy is about the arrival of Jesus. And our scripture today is one of those great examples of actually kind of like all three but with a focus on joy. As you heard, the shepherds were minding their business, looking after their sheep, doing whatever sheep do while they tend their flocks at night, (laughs) to quote a nice song at Christmas. And an angel appears to them. And Cat read this line, the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. We kind of skip over that because it goes quickly on with the angel announcing what's going to happen, the birth of Savior. But for that moment, the angel appears and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And we normally visualize, you know, nice big bright light, I guess, and something happening. But whenever the scriptures talk about the glory of God, It's about his transforming presence. It's about something that's big, something that's, and it it does normally include light, and, and, and that's what we saw at the transfiguration of Jesus. They all transfigured light, and that's part of the glory. But you might also remember about Moses. Remember Moses? He actually, um, he used to meet with the Lord in his tent. And they watch, and they'd say, we could see the glory of the Lord descend on the tent. And Moses had to come out wearing a veil because in his presence, his face had changed. <laughs> I could imagine he had a massive amount of sunburn or something, like it glowed red. But, um, but something happened in the presence of the Lord's glory. And then Moses, um, as he wants to lead the people away from Mount Sinai, he, he says to the Lord, Lord, I'll lead the people if you show me your glory. And God says to him, no, 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 mate. <laughs> if I was to show you my glory, you could, you, 
the, the thing was, they understood that they could die. And so he says, no, no, I'm going to walk past. I'll put you in the side of a cliff and you can look at the back <laughs> of the Lord's glory. That's how big this was happening. These shepherds weren't just seeing a nice white light. The presence of God had arrived as well. But God's glory was there. And those shepherds in the darkness of the night, suddenly being overwhelmed by God's amazing presence, they were rightly terrified. But the angel says to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. What's going on that's going to bring great joy? The news of the arrival of a saviour. And what follows then in the scripture? What follows is this great celebration. It says, suddenly the angels were joined by a vast host of others. The armies of heaven praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. That little phrase, armies of heaven, in, in, is a reference to the, uh, the Old Testament idea that in the heavens were the, all of God's, um, the spiritual world, all the angels and the hosts, and there were so many of them. They, that's why they get this term, the armies of heaven. So these shepherds, the presence of God arise, if that isn't amazing enough, well, then the angel, well, suddenly the host of all the angels appear. And in celebration, they sing, their, they sing that great line, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those who God is pleased. Must have been like amazing moment sight and who gets to see it the shepherds who are tending their flocks at night the arrival of the news turns into this demonstrative response of joyous praise of jubilation of exaltation exaltation and adoration it was amazing and the thing I find the most interesting about it is that it's the angels, it's these angels that burst into this massive celebration of praise for news that wasn't about them or for them. The, the angels, they live in the presence of God all the time, but the news is about the arrival of God into our world, into humanity's world, into the created space of our world. The news wasn't for the angels' benefits. That wasn't for the angels' benefits. It was for our benefit. But the angels, they, caught, they knew what was it meant to have the presence of God arrive. And they're celebrating with that amazing chorus. I think in some ways they kind of like set the gold standard. <laughs> if we want to think about joyous adoration and praise, I reckon we kind of go, mm, maybe we've got to be like the angels one day. It actually reminds me why in that verse in Revelation, now I'm dropping to the other end of the Bible, right at the end, where it says, one day all of the peoples are going to be gathered together and in worship and praise, they're going to say, holy, holy is the Lamb. We're going to get caught up in the celebration of joy in the presence of God. And then, as you go, read in the scripture, I think, to probably one of the most understated sentences in the scripture where it says, having all this happen, it says, the angels go back to heaven and the shepherds said to each other, oh, maybe we should go to Bethlehem. <laughs> like, duh. Like, man, I just think, no, nah, would have been, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing, what's happened, what God has told us about. We're off. 
the news of the arrival of the Saviour actually causes action, doesn't it? When you get this sense of joy, it want, you, it, you got to do something. It's praise, it's worship, it's action. The news of the arrival of the Saviour brings joy that started this amazing, what I call this dance of the angels. But then the shepherds, they get to join in the dance by going to Bethlehem and seeing the Saviour. So what's your response? What's your response to the news that the Saviour has arrived? Does it fill you with a sense of joy, jubilation, celebration, triumph, pleasure, happiness? I actually hope it does in some small way. I hope it does in a big way. I hope that even now as I'm talking about it, there's something about a growing sense of the joy, celebration of joy, about the arrival of our Saviour. Now, over the years, my love of Christmas carols has changed. One thing that's never changed now, I know you would never, the pastoral search committee never asked me this question, and I'm going to admit something today that could lose, I'll lose my job. I hate carols by candlelight on Christmas Eve. I hate it. You ask April, it's true. Paul does not like carols by candlelight. But that's because I've never been much into Christmas carols. How, sorry, Faye, I know, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not too late. You can find another minister for Sunday, for the wedding, all right? But over the last 10 years or so, I've started to every year at Christmas time, before Christmas time, in this Advent season, I've started to look for the latest new release album by my favourite, you know, worship bands or whatever, and their reworking of Christmas carols or the new songs that they're writing, and I love it. I just love it. Playing them, I love finding what's new. Love hearing their renditions and versions. So this year, obviously I was thinking about need to preach on joy and that Christmas carol, Joy to the World. And so weeks ago, I just started to listen to all these different versions of Joy to the World. And it suddenly dawned on me that as you listen to the lyrics of that song, it's all about what I'm talking about today. It's all about the joy being the celebration of our rival, of our saviour. And I've been mesmerised by the lyrics of that song, as simple as they are. And we're going to, in a minute, I'm going to invite you to sing or just reflect on the words as we play the song. But before we do, I want us to look at the words of the song. And so it starts with joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. Heaven and nature sing. Don't you see that whole thing of the joy creates a response out of, our, of song. But why? Because our saviour has come. It's a wonderful example of our joy at Christmas. It's a celebration of the arrival of our Lord and it transforms us into praise. Second, ver second verse, joy to the world, the Saviour reigns. Oh, great, I like that one. Let men their songs employ. Now, sorry, sexist language here. Men, Isaac Newton, Isaac Watts, sorry, not Newton, Isaac Watts wrote this back in 1837 or something. So a bit of uh, language happening there, but... That if we said, let people their songs employ while fields, rocks, hills, plains repeat the sounding joy. It's awesome. And then next verse, 
No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessing flow far as the curse is found. This whole idea of who, what is back, almost back to the hope again, aren't we? The hope of and a piece of who Jesus is. What's he going to do? He sets us free. What, that's where we get the term saviour from. It captures this whole essence of Jesus, the purpose of our hope. And the final verse, he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove their glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. On Christmas Day, I'm going to be talking about the wonders of his love. But that, I love that statement. He rules the world with truth and grace. They're not going to say that about Donald Trump or Joe Biden. They're not going to say that about Scott Morrison. As, as, as good as those ideas may or may not be, but we sing it about our God, that he rules this world with truth and grace. Awesome stuff. So as we come to a close, I challenge you this week to get this song stuck in your head. Or make a playlist on your phone. Or as um, Elizabeth has made a playlist, it was you, Elizabeth, wasn't it? Made a playlist uh, on Spotify. And now I realise some of you don't even know what Spotify is. But for those who do, there's a Spotify playlist called WPBC Christmas Songs. WPBC Advent 2020. And she just chucked in a lot of songs. Can people add to that Spotify list? So our West Preston Facebook page. Yeah. So you could, and that's all different songs, all different artists. That's another way. Get into your head. And as you hear the lyrics, though, as you hear the lyrics of the song, which is Paul, the hater of Christmas candles by Caroline, as, as you hear the lyrics, think about the meaning of the lyrics and you will experience um, joy into whatever's happening around you. As you focus on the lyrics, you'll feel joy. Now, and you don't have to wait until Christmas Day to capture and take this joy into our lives. We can do it all the time just by reminding ourselves and others around us who Jesus is. And imagine, just imagine what this week could be like if I had those moments of joy in amongst everything else that's going to be on so in our remaining days before Christmas, get those Christmas carols going that speak about the truth about Christmas. And I'm not talking about My Myra Carey's, you know, all I want is you for Christmas. Um, <laughs> but those Christmas carols that speak the truth about the season and crank them up, get the volume happening and celebrate the joy of Christmas for the arrival of our Saviour. And as we listen to this carol, Joy to the World, for all those fans of King and Country version, <laughs> I invite you, though, to look at the lyrics and push into the lyrics. Yeah, let's just do that.
Thank you, Paul, for sharing a beautiful message and that beautiful song. Um, I really liked what you said at the start of your message, actually, where you talked about how joy is something that we feel and what you think is what you feel. <laughs> so I know that Christmas can be, you know, a bit of a harassed season with lots of busyness and things that you need to do and presents to buy and things to cook and so on. And I know after my week, I feel a bit busy and harassed. So I wonder how you guys are feeling now. And I wonder if we can change how we feel by meditating on Jesus coming into the world, what this season really means, why we really celebrate. Um, so I'm going to say a quick prayer and you're welcome to join me in that, that hopefully we can kind of really draw on that truth and that grace to bring us joy. Dear Father, we thank you again for everything that you've done for us, that Jesus, you gave us the gift of Jesus and the gift of grace, and the gift of your presence. And God, as we um, are in the lead up to Christmas and there are so many things to do and lots of busyness and harassment, um, and we may not be feeling particularly joyful, God, I really ask that you will help us to focus on you and that we will find our joy in you and we'll remember why we're celebrating in jesus name amen so our benediction today is actually was in the sermon so i think we're on the same wavelength it is rejoice in the lord always i say it again rejoice show your mighty hand heal our streets and